Hey guys, it is RollonMath42, and today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial that has been requested many times before. I've seen a couple different versions, but most of them have been mainly uh, unlisted or private videos, and I do have them myself that I've had private for a while, but I decided with the recent release of Lemon and its newest update supporting Black Ops 2 multiplayer and zombies, I'm not sure about single player, um, I decided I might as well go ahead and show you guys uh, how to go ahead and convert them. So what you're going to want to have is Autodesk Maya. You can use 8.5 using the Call of Duty World at War mod tools uh, Maya plugin that's included. I will be using the 2012 version however with Aiden's uh, plugin. I'll leave links in the description where to get the plugin in case you don't have it. And then you're going to also want to get some of Tommy Max's tools from his website, which I'll link down below. You're mainly going to want to have Lime, Lemon, and then as his Xanim exporter. And if we're going to, if you're going to be doing this for Black Ops 1, obviously this Black Ops Sound tool. For this tutorial, I will be going over it on Black Ops 1. However, the t the process is quite similar for World at War and COD 4. In case you're doing it for those, so let's go ahead and get started. First you'll obviously want to go ahead and run Lime and go ahead and load up whichever game that you're going to be exporting from. I already have all my models exported but I will show go ahead and show you guys how to have it set up. All you want to do is go ahead and just go online. Go ahead and load up a custom game, and then it can be on any of the maps, and then simply start match. You can go ahead and load up Lime now. And as you can see it detected the game, because it will show the icon right here of whichever game it is that it has loaded at the time. So then just go ahead and list models once you're in the game. If you want to make sure, you can go ahead and just click pick your class. And I'll go ahead and load the models, clear it, and list it one more time. You are cleared for contact. Then you'll want to go ahead and click load model. What I normally do is I'll export all of the models that begin with T6 underscore attach and all the way down to web. Or one of the options you can do is, is just simply an export all, and then in this folder right here, it'll export all of the models that are loaded. You may want to go ahead and set up some settings beforehand though, such as in the export options, make sure to have the include images with model and copy image to subdirectory. And you'll simply just want to be exporting the MA and you really won't need the X model export since we're going to be messing with the model. Since I already have it exported, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. And then while you're still in here, you'll just go ahead and load up Lemon and then export all the anims. So once we're done here, we can go ahead and close it all. For this tutorial, I'm going to be doing the uh, SWAT 556 from the or being an assault rifle. And one of the main reasons why I'm doing it is to show you how to also set up the two clip system, which is actually going to be the same way that you're going to be doing it for every other model. Normally, whenever you export models with Lime, if you'll open up one of the folders, you'll notice that there won't be any images. This is because for some reason Lime decides to export the images to the first time they are used in this certain folder for the weapon. So for the SIG 556 or the SWAT, we have to go to the first instance which is the fast mag, and then the images are in here. So we're going to go ahead and copy all of these models that are related to the SWAT 556. That includes the fast mag, mag, and the normal gun itself. So just do control C to copy and then go to your model export folder 
I have a folder called custom weapons and in here I'm just going to paste them and now go ahead and enter the assault rifle view which is the main gun itself and go ahead and open up the MA file go ahead and bring that folder back up go ahead and drag the bind file onto the 3D view here go ahead and go back a folder and open up the mag which is or suffixed with underscore view and open it up in another scene and we'll go ahead and drag the bind file onto the scene as well and then we'll do a control s to save it but since I had the student version you just hit continue and close it some of the mags will not have a bind file whenever you go to open it up all you have to do is simply just bind the tag clip to the meshes that are included for the gun or for the clip so now we'll just go ahead and drag the mag onto your 3d view that way you'll import it into the same scene as the SWAT 556. Let me just go ahead and create a new perspective because for some reason my default one has been a bit screwy lately. So if we go ahead and go into the textured view, which is 6, you'll notice that they're not set up. This is because we had changed its directory so it's still trying to run it from the line directory and it's not able to pick it up. So we'll just simply remap it. This isn't needed, but whenever we go to do the anims, it's a bit nicer to be able to look at the gun and see how it looks like without it all being just white. So to do what I just did here, the hypershade, you go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. You click on the first one here. This one is the MTL T6 attached bullet. Click the little square and then the little folder go to wherever you put your model and then we're going to go into the fast mag folder because that is where the images is and then go ahead and actually before we select the color go back to here we'll go ahead and set this up now so we don't have to do this later delete any of the images that are AO or ambient occlusion since we're not going to be using them and then you'll want to go ahead and get rid of any prefixes and suffixes that are within the file up to the point of MTL and th then the type of image. This is the specular map, so I'm just going to call it spec. And then this one, we just simply have to re remove the, g the prefix of G or underscore hyphen G. That way, whenever in Black Ops 1, when we convert the image, it's not going to have multiple Gs or a really long file name that we don't really need. Then you'll want to make sure to have paint.net installed to do this. You could probably also use Photoshop or uh, GIMP, but I prefer to use uh, paint.net for this. Simply open up the file that is DDS. This is the color map first. Change the file type to TGA and hit save. OK. And close it and you can now delete the DDS and we do the same thing with a specular map save as TGA and save and hit OK one more thing you'll also want to do is go ahead and go to adjustments and hit black and white and then go file save as and then change the suffix here spec to COS or cosine this is to give the gun a bit more of a reflective look and it's going to look a lot better in game so now you should have all four and now we'll go ahead and select the color map you can put the specular map but it's obviously going to have a different look this is actually the bullet file and I accidentally put the assault rifle I believe I already have the bullet in one of my other folders right here in the case that you don't have it and you need it usually you can find it in the underscore images folder here at the top just simply look for a bullet and then you'll want to have the T6 attached bullet spec 
color and normal and then you'll do the same thing with the images that we did for the swap 556 where you make your cosine map and change all to DDA, uh, TGA as you'll notice here it does have the alpha channel playing in the file what we'll go ahead and do is we'll hold right click over it and then let go over graph network in 8.5 you'll have two different arrows going into this section over here you'll want to hover over each one and figure out which one is transparency it will show up if you as shown here however in 2012 it has both in the same uh, channel so we'll just go ahead and delete the connection overall and then near the bottom right here hold right click go to out color color and then let go and then hit left click right here on this section and hit color so now it won't show the alpha channel within the 3d scene and now we simply do the rest with or the same thing to the rest of the files As you'll notice, with quite a few of the Black Ops 2 guns, there are multiple materials set up for each of the camos. This is because in Black Ops 2, they have different images for each camo, usually two to three different textures. In the case you wanted to put your own camo on the gun whenever you import it in-game, usually you can just select one of the ones, usually one or two, and then put your camo on there or you could rename that material to something that you're using for an overall look for all of your guns. In this case I'm not going to be putting a camo so I'm just going to leave it to the defaults it has. As you'll see down here we have three left however these are the same ones that are already in here however they are for the mag so as you can see what Maya likes to do is that it will put the first part of the name as the name of the MA file it came from underscore the name of the material so what we'll do is we'll hold right click over it and go to select objects with materials and then go ahead and hold right click over our original material and let go over assign material to selection and then we'll do the same thing here this one uses camo 1 so we'll do it over camo 1 over here this one uses camo 2 I believe no 3 actually and we'll let go here and now we can click on each one by holding sh shift after selecting the first one and then hit delete now our gun has the textures as it should look in here but as you can see we need to reposition the magazine what I recommend doing in the case that the, the gun you are doing does not have the magazine already in place is go ahead and open up your browser and go to Call of Duty Wikia.com and then look for the gun that you are doing. So in this case, SWAT 556. I believe it has a space or a dash. There it is. and then usually there's an image right here for each gun and you can kinda go off of it for where your mag is supposed to be placed so as you can see in comparison to our mag it has these little grooves along here and it shows one and two looks like those are the only two on there and it's a bit lower about right once it's in place we we'll could go ahead and just close the browser for now we'll go ahead and click this button right here that opens up the outliner on the left hand side and change my perspective again and then we'll go ahead and open up the joints for our imported clip and you should have a tag clip joint here 
And we'll go ahead and open up the joints for the main gun itself, as you see in here. And we'll middle mouse click drag the tag clip underneath J gun. Not to where it's on top of one of these other ones in here, but just underneath J gun or on J gun itself. And that will group it with the rest of the gun. So that way, if you select J gun and hit W to activate the move tool, it should move the gun and the mag itself. Obviously you will have noticed that the gun is missing parts from the right hand side and that is because whenever Treyarch went to make the model as to reduce the amount of vertices used on the gun they removed whatever was not necessary because it is, isn't shown in game through the animation. Usually there is a reason why uh, the FOV is restricted on some games because they don't want you to see obviously these holes that are in the gun. Once this is complete, we can go ahead and export the model. So go ahead and go to whichever tools you have for exporting. This one's obviously Aiden's. We'll go ahead and click here for the three dots, and we'll export it to our model export folder, and then to whichever folder your gun is in. I usually put it in whichever folder has the main gun, so in here. And I'll call it view model SWATs. 556. Five, then we'll want to go ahead and select each group that contains something for the gun. So that means this one here. Joints. And then the mag. Just by holding control. And then go to edit. Select hierarchy. Click on save selection. if it'll let me. Then go to export selected and then say yes to save changes. In the case you've been wondering how I've been moving around the scene, I'll probably put an annotation at the beginning of the video since I have been asked before. Just hold alt and left click drag to be able to move around like this and then obviously scroll in and out to zoom and you can also do the same thing with alt right click hold. So now that we've finished up our model, we can go ahead and go to file, save scene as, go to your model export folder, and then wherever your weapon is, change the file type to Maya binary, and then set the file name to base, and hit continue. Now we're going to need to grab a set of view hands. I have my own that I usually use whenever I convert t -anims, and I'll link it in the description if you'll have it. It will not include any images, so whenever you use an EMEA, it'll show up either gray or white, depending on which view you are in. I believe World at War actually has a set of view hands that you could use here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I think I'll yeah I'll just go ahead and link the view hands I'm going to use in the description. And scroll all the way down. So I'm CIA, and here they are. This is going to be what it'll be called, Roll on CIA View Hands, and it's going to be an MB file. So simply just drag it onto the 3D scene, and then you'll want to go ahead and have Tom BMX's um, Xandom tool installed for Mayo. You can get it from the Xandom exporter, and he has instructions on how to install it for your version of Mayo inside of there. So just simply click on his name and then join weapon to rig. Go ahead and do a control S. And then we'll want to go ahead and export the first model. So go ahead and open up your Call D Tools, export X model. Click the three dots. Go to your weapon. We're going to call this model main anim 
model. This stands for the main animated model, and this is going to be the animated model used for whichever um, animations that you use in Asset Manager, except for the ADS animations, which we'll do in a moment. For this, we'll want to select the Roll on CIA View Hands underscore Joints group, go to Edit, select Hierarchy, and then hold Shift and click on one of the meshes for the gun. It does not matter which one, just as long as you click one of them. And hit Save Selection, Export Selected, and do not save. This is going to be important for whenever we're converting T anims. You can save the T anims in each um, MB file of its own. However, to go a bit faster, I usually don't save and then reset the file. So once you've exported that, we'll go to File, Open, Open Up Base, and do not save. Now if we look in here, it still just has the view model that we had originally exported and not the main animated model. So now, go ahead and go to wherever your lemon folder is and open up the export, BO2, and then whichever set of weapons that you exported. In my case, it's in the MP. And then you'll want to go ahead and drag the first anim that we're going to do, which is the idle. The reason why we're doing idle instead of the ADS anim directory, directly, sorry, is because whenever we do the ADS animations, it has to go off of the base idle position. So we'll just go ahead and drag idle onto here. As you can see, it positions the gun in its normal idle position. Most idle animations in Black Ops 2 are simply 4 frames, 0 to 3. However, some are going to have more based on whether or not it has a moving part on the gun, such as the PDW 57 SMG. It has a little um, kind of clip that moves around. And once you've imported that, you'll want to go to your ADS down. And not the ACOG, but just a regular ADS down, and drag it onto the scene. Make sure that you have installed the latest version of his TNM um, plugin because the previous versions actually do not support the drag and drop. I just remember that. So if you go to his website, go to downloads, this is going to be the one that you're going to want to install. So now if you look, we can see that it moves the gun as the ADS anim. And if you want to check how the ADS anim looks, you can go to Create, Cameras, Camera, hit Control A, so we're in the Channel Box or Layer Editor, change Rotate X to 90, Rotate Z to negative 90, and Focal Length to 20. Now if we go to Panels, Perspective, Camera 1, we can view the animation. As you can see, the joints are kind of in the way, so what you can do is you can go to Show, Joints, and they'll hide all the joints. What this looks like in here does not matter. Whenever you are in-game and modifying the weapon file, the FOV that is used is, mo is, sorry, it is changed in there whenever you ADS. This is just to show that the, that this has lined up. So we'll go ahead and change back to our perspective view. We'll go ahead and export the X model first. This time this is going to be the ADS down anim model. Be sure to be on frame zero by the way, the very first frame. Go ahead and select the underscore joints, edit, select hierarchy, then select one of the meshes from the gun not the hands. You can use the hands, but if you're using this specific set, you'll have to apply the white model color, which I did not do, so it's a lot easier just to select the gun, because it already has it. Then go to Save Selection, Export, and then No for Save Changes. And that will export our animated model for the ADS down. Now we'll go to Export XAnim. 
In frames, you're going to change the second number to the last frame here. So in this case, it's 19. Click on the three dots here. It'll, if you're using Aiden's plugin and you already have your path set for your Call of Duty, your modding, it's going to direct you immediately to your Xanum export folder. Then I made a folder called Custom Weapons. And then I'll go ahead and call it BO2 SWAT 556. And the file name that we we'll use for this is the ADS Town. Then we'll open up the group for the Roll-On CIA and View Hands Joints. Open it up until you can see Tag View and Tag Torso and select the two, not ADS or Cambone. Then hit Save Selection, Export Selected, and No. Now we can close out of that. File Open open up the base, don't save, and now we're back to our original file. And now we do the same thing for the ADS up, which is drag in the idle animation, and then drag in the ADS up. As you can see, it did not move the gun in the first position. However, if we move along the animation, it moves it to where the ADS down had its first position. So we'll go back to zero. X4 X model. And then we're going to call this one ADS up anim model. Select the Roland CA view hands joints. Select hierarchy. Select one of the meshes of the gun. Save selected. Export. And no. Now we go to anim. Change it to the last frame, which is 18 in this case. Click the three dots. Custom weapons. Our SWAT 556 folder. And put in ADS up. Now we'll open up the hierarchy here and select tag view and tag torso. Hit save selected or selection, export selected, and hit no. And now we'll go ahead and open up the base file again. And now we'll just continue exporting all the different animations. So the next one is going to be ADS fire. And this time we do not have to do any more X models since we're done with that. Just simply go to Xanim, change the second frame, save to, and we're going to call this one ADS Fire. Now for all the rest of the animations, we're going to select Tag Torso, Tag Cambone, Edit Select Hierarchy, Save, Export, No. Open the file again. Next one is Last Shot. Go to Export X Anim. Change it to 6. 3 dots. ADS Last Shot. And then we select Tag Torso and Tag Cambone. Edit, select Hierarchy, Save Selection, Export Selected, No. The reason why we do Tag Torso on Cambone is because whenever Treyarch animated their guns, their setup was Tag View, Tag Torso, and then the rest of the joints that are underneath Tag Torso, and then it had Tag View, Tag ADS, and Tag View, Tag Cambone. However, with uh, Infinity Wards, they have Tag View, Tag ADS, then Tag Torso, and then Tag View, Tag Cambone. So if you were to be doing the Infinity Ward animations, you would actually select ADS instead of Torso for all these. However, for all of these being Treyarch animations from Black Ops 2, we just do Torso and Cambone, and then for ADS, Tag View and Tag Torso. So for this part of the video, I'll go ahead and speed it up, and it's basically just going to be doing all of the other animations that need to be done. Obviously, depending on which uh, game you are doing your animations for, you may not need the uh, last shot 
and sprint empties and down to prone and all the others. However, since I am doing this for Black Ops 1, you will you can use them and it'll help make the gun a bit more complete. So once I've completed all these, I'll slow down the video again so you can actually see what's going on. Alright, so once you have all of the animations completed, we can go ahead and open up the base file one more time. We will be using it later in the tutorial, but for now we'll just leave it as is in here. Go ahead and minimize it. And now if we go ahead and look in our XNM export folder, you should now have all of these already converted. I'm just checking file sizes. Usually whenever you have guns that have both a regular and uh, empty versions, you can see if the file sizes make sense and if they are fairly um, equal to each other then that means that they've been converted right. Sometimes I'll forget to do select hierarchy or some other thing that will cause the animation to not work properly, but it seems like we did all of these as they should be. So once you're ready, we'll go ahead and load up Asset Manager from your bin folder. And then what I recommend doing this is doing a save file save as. Go to your model export folder and go ahead and call it something general that you're going to use for your Black Ops 2 weapons. I actually have mine in uh, GDT already called Custom 
weapon assets, so I'll go ahead and open that up. And if you're wondering why I don't have that many things in my model export folder, it's because this is a new set of mod tools I recently installed. So we'll go ahead and do the materials first. To do this, we're going to go ahead and open up the model that we had exported. I reckon it, recommend opening it up in Notepad++, another free program that you can get. And then go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of the file. These are going to be the materials that we're going to need to convert. If you look right here, you'll see num materials, a number. Oh no, that's just saying how many materials are. Tomorrow. Sorry. So material zero being the first one, and then quotation marks has the name of the material one of the ones that we're going to need to convert. we do a control C to copy it. I'll go ahead and copy one of my, in or actually no, for the tutorial's sake, I'll go ahead and create a new entry, and then just paste it into there and hit OK. Change the material type to model fong, surface type to none. Now go to the three dots next to color map. And we're going to direct it to where our images are for this swap which is in our fast mags. We'll sort it by details. And then because we are doing color map, we'll select color. Then for normal map, we'll select the NML. Whoops. That's an MP40 folder. Normal. And then in World at War and COD4, you'll have one that says specular. So you're going to hit the three dots, and then select the one for the spec map. And then in COD4, there's one more underneath specular that says cosine. In World at War, I'm just going to check what it is real quick. I'm not sure if I can have two at once. I think I can. Yep. Uh, we'll just open up this one. I don't know, one of these. Yep, it's also cosine power map. And then in Black Ops 1, it's called specular roughness. We're going to put the uh, cosine map that we created, which is the black and white image. Then we'll go ahead and hit F10, not F11, F10. In Black Ops 1, it'll look through your GDTs and see if you mean a different material. Just hit cancel. and then it'll go ahead and convert. If it does not if it finds any duplicates in your other GDTs, it'll let you know to hit Y, N, or A. Just hit A. And then you should be able to convert prop uh convert convert successfully. So now we'll go ahead and do the other ones. And then this one is gonna use the same images so we don't need to do anything for it. And then we have 3 and 4. We also have the MTLT6 attached bullet. I already have mine here, but you just simply copy this and then remap the images to your four images for your bullet. So we're going to do 3 here. Hit F10. Cancel. Another option that you can do, in case you don't want to do F10, is just click current asset only up here, but not all assets. The only time you ever do all assets is whenever you first install your mod tools. Once you have all the materials done, go to your X model. Being that I already have this GDT set up, it has it here at the top. However, whenever you do yours, obviously it will be scattered in the list. So you just have to scroll up and down here to find which section it is. And then you'll do a new entry. 
we're going to call this the exact same as the X model export. So it's view model slot 556. Change the type to animated. Click the three dots. And then change it to your view model. And then hit F10. Hit cancel. Now there will be this error that comes up for some guns, not all, and it basically discards some of the tries that are on the model, and it causes it to where in-game you can see through the model. I'll show you what you'll have to do to fix that, at least in one method. So then now we'll go ahead and change this one to the world model. Go here. Oh, I forgot. We did not do our world model. So let's go ahead and do our world model now before we continue. So we'll open it up here. World models are a lot easier to set up than the view models, thankfully. All you have to do is drag the bind file, go to your mag. This is the view. Usually the worlds do not have mail files, so you just drag it onto your 3D scene. Uh, change the perspective. And then open up the outliner. And then we'll select tag clip, and then open up the group where all the meshes are for the mag. Change your tab right here in the drop down to animation. Go to skin, bind skin, and if you don't have it set up, click the little square and make sure you set bind to selected joints and hit bind skin. Now we'll hit W with the tag clip selected. We'll move it down to where the clip should be placed. I should do good around there. Around there, and then we'll open up the joints group, and middle mouse click drag underneath tag weapon. We'll go window rendering editors hyper shade, and all we have to do for this one is actually drag this one right here. Uh, select objects and materials, doing a right click hold, and let go over the camo one which is here. Now we can get rid of that and close hypershade and export the X model. Well, for this one you'll want to save. You don't have to do so for the anims, but I'm used to doing that, so that's why I did it there. So now we should be able to have the world model here. And then redo PC and convert current asset only, or F10. And we'll hit any key to continue. And now to do the X anims. So go ahead and make a new entry. We're going to do view model underscore the name of the gun, swap 556 underscore. And then what I like to do is I'll go ahead and open up the uh, folder where I have all the anims in, make it a lot easier to know what we need to do. And then we're just going to be putting in each of these names right here. So the first one we'll do is ADS down, and hit enter. So then for the anim file, we'll hit the three dots, we'll direct it to the ADS down. For model file, we'll go ahead and direct it to the ADS down anim model. Untick use bones, change it to type to relative, 
and then convert current asset only and hit cancel and it should convert fine now we'll do copy entry change it to the next one so this one is ADS fire all anims except the ADS anims are going to use the main anim model do F10 cancel and a key to continue copy entry this next one is the last shot it's the same thing as fire copy it <clears throat> and then we're going to do ADS up select it there change the model file to ADS up and a model F10 cancel you hit it and you can hit any key in advance so I'll manually do it copy it and now it's a DTP all of the animations will be using these exact same settings except for idle, idle empty if available, sprint in, sprint empty if available, sprint loop, sprint loop if available, and sprint out, sprint out empty if available. For all of the others, they will not use looping. That includes the fire. So now we'll go ahead and speed up this part of the video and then I'll slow it down once I finished all the anims in here. Alright, so once you have your animations done, they should now all be in your raw Xanum folder, which we'll go ahead and go check real quick. If you sort it by date modified, newest at the top, here they all are. Now you may have noticed before, whenever I mentioned that you only do the loop for the idols and for sprint loop, but you may be wondering why I did not do it for the down to prone. That is because whenever the down to prone animation is done, it only plays once and is not looped. However, it remains in that final position of the loop 
animation until you hit the ground or wherever you're landing. So that's why we don't set it to looping, or else we'll just continuously move the gun back and forth. So now we'll go ahead and go to, well, this part of the tutorial is where it's going to be different for each COD depending on which one you're modding. Obviously for Black Ops 1 it's going to be one method, World at War and COD 4 are similar in their own ways. So from here this is pretty much up to you what you're going to do. I'm going to continue the video however, doing this for Black Ops 1. Um, if you know, already know what to do to be able to get from the animations and the models in game, then that's for you to do. However, I will be including one last thing before I go full on Black Ops 1 that you'll be able to do real quick. So you'll want to go ahead and open up uh, your XAnim exporter. I'll just put it to the right. <clears throat> and then go to your raw XAnim folder. And then obviously we're going to have a few of these animations using sounds. However, whenever we were exporting them, at least in 2012 and above, we were not able to implement the note tracks due to Aiden's plugin. However, on 8.5 you have an option to import the note tracks, and if I'm not mistaken, those note tracks that you import have the data needed to be able to already have um, your note tracks set up, so you can skip this step. However, this is going to be necessary. Uh, there is a way that you can do this by using hex editor. However, I'm just going to be doing it the simple way using Tom's XAnim exporter. So we'll go ahead and drag onto here the uh, files that we're going to need, which are first raise, reload, and reload empty. This is where we're going to need our base position again. So we'll go ahead and drag onto here the first one, which is We'll do first raise first, actually. Uh, first raise. So now we'll go ahead and watch the animation to see what they do. Alright. So with the bolt going back and forth, we're going to find the first frame right here, 16. And then this is going to be when we play the uh, bolt back sound. Usually whenever you do your note tracks, you'll want to play it on the frame before the action is actually done. So the actual action starts on 17 forward, so we're going to do it on 16. So we'll add a note track. We'll call this one um, Reload SWAT 556 Bolt Back. And then we select our frame which is frame 16 and hit add. Now we watch again. So on frame 22 reload SWAT 556 bolt forward <coughs> and we select frame 22 hit add and that's the last sound that's played for the first raise. So now we just hit save selected. And in the case that the tool messes up for some reason, we'll just hit yes. There has been cases whenever or there have been cases whenever I save the animation, it'll actually mess up the note tracks and the frames that it is on. So just in case that happens again, just keep a backup. So now we we'll move on to the reload. Unless you're doing a weapon that has a different um, setup for sounds for the two reloads, usually I'll implement the reload empty and use that for um, the uh, note tracks for both. Oops, I implemented the grip reload. That's not what we want. So reload empty. Basically, the cases that I, I saved before would usually go for uh, sniper rifles such as the DSR-50 and Ballista. You'll just have to look at the uh, animation to be able to tell. So the first thing that happens is the 
mag out, which occurs on frame 28. So we'll add a note track, call it reload swat 556 uh, mag out, and that is on frame 28. Hit add. Now hit add note track again. This is going to be reload swat 556 mag in, and that'll be on frame. 42. Then hit add. And then because this is the reload, we can go ahead and save it. Hit yes. So 28 and 42. We'll go ahead and add them onto the empty animation. Reload SWAT 556 mag in Now we check for the first time he is that So on frame 70 Reload SWAT 556 and bolt forward. Add, save selected, yes. And then just to make sure that the anims are alright, we'll go ahead and implement or er, import all three and look and our note tracks are saved. So now we can close mail as we won't need it anymore. And then that's, this is the end of the uh, part that will go for all CODs. So now it's up to you to do it for COD4 World at War if that is what you're doing your weapon for. If you're doing it with Black Ops 1 is with me then continue. Otherwise, good luck. Um, you can look up other tutorials on setting up weapon files. I have a few of my own that were for World at War. Uh, none for COD 4 since I really don't mod it as much.